one of the things when you are approached by or when we interact with those who have the comedic, the Pan-African, the Black First, the Black Conscious, those type of mindsets. When they are trying to teach you and you reject their teaching, you have no understanding of where they're coming from. You are deaf, dumb, and blind. You are lost found. You, sir, are a coon. You are a sambo. You are a Uncle Tom. This is how or this is what happens with any of us who have tried to be brother or sister with the black first, pro-black, blackity-black, pan-African, comedic, whatever, even the Hebrew Israelites, all that stuff. They so smart. Everybody is deaf, dumb, and blind. All the black people are stupid. You can't think for yourself. You and I need to follow Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, Noble Joe Ali, some dead people in Kemet or whatever. We are too stupid and we don't know what's going on. And we love the white man. One of the first things or one of the things that they would tell us also is you are filled with self-hatred. You hate yourself because you won't accept being an African. And now we have a new group of people with the same mindset. They call themselves uh, native the real Native Americans, Aboriginals, Aborigines, they have the same mindset. You're stupid. You don't know yourself. Your history did not start on a slave plantation. This is what they would tell you, and they get very, very angry with you if you do not embrace being some kind of unspecified African or an unspecified Native American, Aboriginal, Aborigines, however this stuff, or some unspecified, unknown, unseen, Hebrew, or comedic type person or whatever, or more. How many of us have been on a job interview? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, okay. Many of us have been on a job interview. So, you're speaking or talking with the interviewer, the, the person that's, that you're trying to impress, bringing your qualification, you're trying to, and hope that they would hire you for this job. You want, you want to be employed. So, one of the things in an interview they will ask you, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. Well, my grandmother was born in 1905 and they had a little sharecropper. Um, oh, they had a little sharecropper ranch and they got their water from a well and they had cows and chickens and they bought a car I think in 1935 how, how does that sound my uncle my, my great uncle he was um, he was a fifth degree mason 
and he owned a barbershop in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> okay, what's wrong with this picture? The interviewer asks you, can you tell me about yourself? And you're going to tell the interviewer about your grandmother, your grandfather, great-great-grandfather, your grand-uncle, your mother, your sister. Now, how does that sound? How does that look? When we are asked to talk about ourselves, it's supposed to be about you. Not your mother, not your great-grandmother. It's about you. So, how does it look? These people are telling us you don't have knowledge of self. First of all, you ask them, what self are you talking about? Is it being an ancient Egyptian, Kemetic, a Hebrew Israelite, or a Moor, or a black Muslim, or a Christian, or a black first, or some kind of Pan African Aboriginal? What 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 is what is the knowledge of self? So They bring us confusion because the interviewer is asking us, tell me a little bit about yourself. So you ask these people, the Kemetics, the Hebrew Israelites, they refer to the Bible, they refer to the Quran, they refer to ancient Kemet, they, ancient Israel or all these different places, Africa. What has that got to do with you? In order to know self, you need to know about you. And then they go and tell us about what they did in Africa or what they did in ancient native North America hundreds of years ago. That's not you. That's not self. If I talk about my great-grandfather, I'm related, that's a part of me, but that's not me. That's part of my lineage, but that's not me. So it makes no difference whether you are Kemetic or Aboriginal or Moorish or Hebrew Israelite. When we're talking about the knowledge of self, Self begins with you. Self begins with us as an individual. So when I'm talking to an interviewer looking for a job, or when I'm talking about myself, well, I was raised in a little town called Slater, Mississippi, and it was during the towards the end of Jim Crow. I joined the Nation of Islam under Minister Farrakhan in 1981. That's self. That's my history. That's me. That's my experience. Now, my relatives introduced me to Nation of Islam teaching. My relatives introduced me to the Baptist Church. But if I talk about them, that's not me. My history about self begins with my life. It begins with our life. So it makes no difference whether you are related or your lineage goes to Kemet or you are connected to the Israelites or you're connected to the Moors. That's not self. 
Self is your individual history, personal, who you are. So as a people living in America, you cannot include Africa because we never lived in Africa. We cannot be a more, we never lived in Spain. We never lived in Kemet. We never lived in ancient Israel or ancient Ethiopia. That's not you. That's your relatives. That's part of your lineage if you want to claim that. But that's not you. How are you going to evolve and you don't know who you are? You're trying to find out where your people been but you don't know who you are so you don't know where to go and it's confusing because you don't know you're confused about your lineage and of course you're confused about your lineage you don't have no understanding of self the honorable Elijah Muhammad in the nation of Islam taught accept your own be yourself and yourself is a righteous Muslim no yourself is that which you make or understand who you are from the present as an individual or as a people where we are now today that self so it's difficult, and you're having a difficult time talking to the so-called Negro, talking to, to black people, your people, because you don't understand us. You have no knowledge of self. You're thinking about a past, your, your mother's past and your grandmother's past, and a past you never lived. And so you put on these costumes. You put on the big fez, the red fez and the tassel and the bow ties and sheep herders clothes. You were ancient Hebrew Israelite and you try to dress up like people you never met in your life. You never knew. You don't know. And it's all right to understand how they live, but that's not you. Your mother and father born in 1937 born in 1910 why aren't you trying to dress up like them you know them you know your mother and father and grandfathers born in 1910 1899 or whatever you see their pictures why aren't you trying to be yourself be like who you know now, if you're not going to dress up like people who you know and you see their old pictures, why are you trying to copy and want to be somebody you've never seen before in your life? You have no connection to. And it's because you don't know yourself. And then you work. Once you know who you are, be your own man. When you become an adult and can stand on your own, you want to be your own man. You want to run to Africa and you want to be from Kemet and you want to be a Hebrew Israelite because you can't stand on your own. You don't know how to build your own house. You have a childish mentality. You're not an adult. And it all stems from the fact that you don't know yourself. And you want us to follow you. Because we're lost, deaf, dumb, and blind. And so what has all this created for you? Except feel good teachings. Absolutely nothing. I suggest you to accept reality, my friend. It's much easier. Accept your own and be yourself.